mode. Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue chez Matrix, les webinaires Matrix. Aujourd'hui, nous avons une présentation de Morningstar, M. Kyle Wilsey, un ingénieur de technique, et puis il va nous présenter les contrôleurs de charge et les onduleurs Morningstar. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Matrix uh, webinar for May 2nd. Today we have, uh, we're lucky to have Kyle Wilsey, a sales engineer at Morningstar, uh, who will present uh, inverters and solar controllers uh, to us from Philadelphia. So welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Kyle, uh, the floor is yours, my friend. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Sean. Um, thanks, everyone. Uh, appreciate you all uh, joining in today. I think we have about uh, about an hour, and hopefully I can cover the majority of uh, the material I'd like to in that time. Um, if if we want, we can you know feel free to chime in uh, and ask questions as we go, or we can wait till the end and uh, and cover them then. I'll hope to leave at least uh, at least ten minutes to to get to your questions. Um, today I just want to cover um, a bit about Morningstar as a company. Uh, dive into the differences in our controller line, down from our smallest uh, four amp controllers all the way up to our highest end 60 amp MPPT con uh, TriStar controllers, um, and give you uh, a bit of a checklist uh, to go through as you decide how best to, to choose a controller for your system, um, for your off-grid battery-based systems. Um, I'll dive in here to, uh, to the slides to get started. Um, hopefully, many of you know Morningstar well. Um, for those of you who don't, I'll just maybe take two or three minutes and give you a quick overview of kind of our history, where we've been, and, and where we do business. Um, we've sold well, well over two million charge controllers uh, and inverters at, at this point in time. Um, we have over 230 distributors in, in 89 countries at last count. In fact, this slide is is a bit dated as of as of yesterday. We did a a, a recount. And we've we've added quite a few um, countries to our distribution list. In fact, we've we've shipped product to all seven continents and uh, over over 111 countries is uh, officially the uh, the total. Um, our mission as a company uh, uh, is first and foremost to to produce uh, high quality, uh, highly reliable uh, off grid solar charge controllers. Uh, for the world's consumption. Um, we've been in business for, for 20 years. Uh, in fact, this year we, we've celebrated our, our 20th anniversary as of last month, um, and I'm here to hopefully carry us into the next 20. Uh, innovation is a big part of what we do. Uh, we have a team of engineers, including uh, several PhDs. We hold many patents, um, as I'll explain later, and, and we truly strive to make the best um, and highest most highly reliable charge controllers on the market. Um, charging batteries can be a complicated business, and it requires a uh, equally uh, complex system to, to manage the charging and, and provide uh, current to, to your off-grid loads. Um, we, we typically expect, uh, in a given system, uh, you know, typically in the industry, 25 years or so of, of panel life at their rated output. And and we try to design what well, we can't quite meet that uh, in power electronics. We we estimate roughly the charge controller should last at least about half that. So all of our products are designed to a 15-year service life at minimum. And being in business as long as we have, we've we've seen quite a few um, uh, Pro Stars, especially being the first product we released, still out there and and working fine so many years later. Um, customer focus is also a big part of what we do. Um, this isn't just a, a bullet on a slide. We really strive every day to, to provide excellent customer support in terms of uh, technical support, um, marketing support for our, for our distributors and, and dealers, um, and continue to focus on this uh, as, we, as we develop new products. I'll say that the same engineers who, who design a lot of our products provide the support, and that's a, an important differentiator when you're uh, looking for, for technical questions after the sale. Or even, or even beforehand, when you're deciding uh, you know, which product is best for you. Um, we we'll won't spend too much time on these, but but I just wanted to tell you that uh, we've we've had a long history. Founded in '93, we introduced our first ProStar in uh, 1995. A couple of years later, um, issued our 
first and, and one of our most important patents on PWM switching back in 1997, which continues to, to serve as a foundation of, of many of our products. Uh, all the way up through 2003, almost, almost 10 years ago now, we introduced our first three-function TriStar controller uh, that continues to, to serve markets uh, very well today. In 2004, um, we received another patent that's, that's pretty ingenious, uh, really has, has helped uh, allow our products to continue to be passively cooled. Um, it's a way that, uh, that, our, that our fast switching mechanisms uh, reduce heat dissipation in, in our circuitry. Um, that's fed into a lot of the, the other products you see here, um, all the way up to back in 2008, our first MPPT solar controller with Trekstar technology. Uh, followed quickly by the TriStar NPPT. Um, coming up in 2013, not shown here, but, but very soon we, we expect to release uh, the newest MPPT TriStar, uh, which will handle up to 600 volts uh, on the solar side for, for typically grid tie strings. I mean, that's a pretty unique product that we're excited about. Um, expect to see that later this year. So again, just a few points about the company. Um, I wanted to emphasize that uh, we've, we've been in business 20 years. We uh, design our products for roughly a 15-year operating life, hopefully longer. Um, all of our products come with a five-year warranty, with the exception of uh, the one smaller off-grid inverter and some of our um, off, uh, rural, rural type uh, developing nation uh, controllers, the SHS. The rest of our products are all fully five-year warrantied, and, and we pride ourselves in, in keeping the, the warranty and RMA process fairly uh, hassle-free. Um, all of our documentation uh, is multilingual, French, English, other languages. We do business, as I said, in uh, several, several countries around the world and need to support uh, um, all languages. Um, everything that we, we produce, uh, that you find online, data sheets, catalogs. Um, these are all uh, types of marketing materials that we, we provide to our distributors and, and dealers as well for, uh, for promotion of, of Morningstar. So in general, um, we really try to be uh, to, in tune with customers' uh, peripheral needs around the controller, support, marketing, and such. Hopefully most of you are familiar with uh, the general line of, of Morningstar's products. Um, we offer a range of uh, PWM type solar charge controllers, namely the SunSavers, SunLight, ProStar, uh, and TriStar, um, as well as the SunSaver MPPT <clears throat> and TriStar MPPT 45 and 60 amp. Um, all of these controllers, in, in one way or another, um, are, are highly certified. We take a lot of care before release to, to go through the necessary steps to attain the relevant certifications for these products to go into residential or industrial systems. Um, not all products are, are certified the same, and that's due to the difference in their expected um, market application. But um, our products are, are the North American market. You can see the, the, the CSA cert um, is available in, in the, the, the higher end products as well as the, the Sun Savers, um, UL, CE. These are all typical certifications that we don't, you know, that we don't spare. Um, so you can be confident that as you're um, using Morningstar, it's going to comply with with the relevant um, codes and, and such that are necessary in off-grid applications. Not a lot of um, imported charge controllers can claim this. Uh, they often don't. They're either not aware or simply don't go to the expense and time to make sure that the North American, Canadian certifications are are included in their products. So that's something to watch out for, um, you know, when comparing Morningstar versus versus others. Um, not getting into some of the the meat of uh, of our product line. I mean, the 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 secrets and and to the reliability and the, and the quality uh, really comes in into play here with with a lot of the innovations that um, that we put great great time and, and effort into building into our products, um, obviously working in off grid, we need our controllers to be environmentally uh, ready to to take what 
weather and, and climate will throw at them. Um, so you'll see for, for all of our controllers, um, they operate in a wide, wide uh, range of, of operating temperatures down to negative 40 C um, and up to usually 60 C. Um, a few of our, our products do derate um, after 45, but I believe that's relevant, relegated to, uh, to some of the much, much smaller units. But the TriStars, the Sun Savers, anything that uh, would be used in a, in a you know, high uh, duty cycle type environments rated up to, to 60 C. Um, tropicalization is, is another issue that is, is central to, to power electronics design in terms of reliability. Uh, we use a DuPont Humiseal uh, conformal coating for all of our, our circuit boards. Um, and what this does is it protects against the corrosive effects of, of salt uh, in, in tropical environments and high humidity. Um, realizing many of, of your systems are, are up in Canada, the, the tropical protection isn't so, uh, so important, but, but the humidity is, is going to play a part no matter where you are. Um, and this conformal coating of our, of our circuit boards works to seal out the moisture that, that can create uh, premature failures in a lot of lower end, lower cost controllers that, that, that spare this expense. With our SunSaver line and parts of the, the TriStar and TriStar MPPTs, we also use a, a proprietary blend of epoxy to encapsulate the, the circuitry to protect it against um, many of the elements that would otherwise damage uh, and render useless uh, the charge controller. Um, it's a two-part epoxy resin that protects, uh, in the case of the Sun Saver, the entire circuit board. It's potted in this, in this encapsulation. In the case of the MPPT, uh, we use this to uh, seal the inductors in a, in a special well inside the aluminum casting to help with heat conduction um, away from the power electronics and protect them from uh, the effects of, of moisture uh, in the environment. You'll also see that the terminals on uh, all of our controllers are, are, are plated uh, to protect against corrosion, which can cause all kinds of um, unwanted uh, failures, sparks, loss of power, and such. With any off-grid system, uh, lightning protection is also a, a major uh, consideration that, that must be taken into account, both at the device level and at the, at the system level. So at the device level, we use a transient voltage suppressor um, to protect the circuitry against near lightning strikes. Um, no amount of, of internal protection is, is going to <laughs> fully protect against a, a direct strike or a very near lightning strike, but um, we, we in include these transient voltage suppressors into our circuitry to, to ensure that if there is is some kind of induced voltage, some high induced voltage due to a, a near strike that the, the, the controller won't smoke and blow up. Um, again, it's not, uh, it's not an end-all, be-all solution. You, you should always use uh, a system, like a full system level lightning suppressor. Um, as you can see here in this uh, image of a, of a weather station in, in Norway, um, uh, dual tri-stars are, are, are in use and some pretty clear um, you know, lightning protection built into that system. So together between what's built in internally and the system level, uh, we feel you can be confident that the, the, the power, solar power electronics for, for your particular application are, are well protected. We start to talk about the robust thermal design, the mechanical side, <coughs> and, uh, and some of the specifics of the, of the circuitry, you really can see where the advanced engineering we put into our products comes into play in the form of extensive electronic protections, things like short circuit, reverse polarity, overcurrent protection. It's really difficult to, uh, to damage a Morningstar controller with incorrect uh, wiring, um, changes in, in, the, uh, in the system. It's, uh, it's difficult to do. Uh, it's difficult to build into the product, but we feel it's important to keep our systems running uh, in remote, unintended places where they can't necessarily be reset very easily. Um, on the mechanical side, uh, something that definitely sets apart uh, Morningstar from, from many others is the fact that we, we insist uh, religiously on, on keeping fans out of, out of our products. Uh, 
for one thing, it reduce, reduces the, uh, the internal consumption, the self-consumption of, of the product, but it also makes it more liable. It's one less part that we have to worry about breaking down or replacing, and, and we do this with some advanced, uh, pretty advanced thermal analysis and uh, some, some major, as you, as you probably are familiar with in our TriStar products, some, some big heat sinks. Uh, but the design of those heat sinks and the fact that they're able to, to dissipate heat throughout this uh, power conversion process is, is pretty important. Um, with a fan, the system, it tends to shorten the, the, the power electronics lifetime and, and cause other issues as well. So the, the passive nature of our products uh, all the way up through even our new 600 volt uh, TriStar is, uh, is pretty important. We use dual layer PCBs, circuit boards. Um, this is uh, a bit more of an advanced uh, manufacturing space and also helps with heat dissipation. And, and we spend a lot of time and effort uh, and money, frankly, uh, testing extensively during the design process uh, at the factory with, with burn-in periods um, in order to make sure that whatever uh, reaches your door is, is as highly reliable as it can be. Here we're just seeing the, some of the design work that goes into the heat sink on the TriStar. You can see the, the, the switches, the FET switches on the underside um, in, in red um, with the heat being dissipated from them um, as the main, the main generator of, of heat in the system, um, reducing the operating temperature of the system and, and keeping it running. Um, with a fan, uh, this is, is sometimes possible, but, but definitely not as efficient, um, not to mention the the air and dust and debris that can get into into the, uh, the internal compartments of a of an electronic product usually not a good thing. Um, I won't spend much too much time talking about communications. Um, this is kind of a this is an in depth topic that can go on for for quite a while. It's almost its own webinar in itself. But but just to to give you a quick overview. Um, Morningstar believes in, in an open standard for, for our communication protocols. Um, a, lot of, a lot of companies will use some kind of proprietary uh, communication protocol that requires uh, additional equipment and um, specific knowledge of, of their particular um, uh, protocols, but, but we use a standard Modbus. It's an industrial standard uh, increasingly used, especially in the solar industry. Uh, with some of the, the SunSpec, I don't know if you've heard of SunSpec work that's going on to, to standardize communication amongst equipment in, in solar. Um, and in, in our higher-end uh, TriStar 60 MPPT with, with Ethernet, uh, we use a standard TCP IP internet-based protocol. Makes things easy, uh, makes uh, integration easy, and it enables third parties to develop uh, their own interfaces for our products to monitor variables, uh, voltages, um, kilowatt hour counters and such to, to interface with our products without the need for specialty equipment um, and, and highly specialized knowledge. So that roughly covers the uh, kind of a general overview of the, of the product side, um, the advantages of the product side of Morningstar. Now I just want to talk in general about uh, solar charge controllers, what it does and, and why it's important to, to spend some time um, really scrutinizing the, the choice of which to use in your system. There's a lot of different choices out there. Um, going back to some of the older technologies, uh, shunt type controllers were, were common maybe uh, 10, 15 years ago. You still see them sometimes today, but they're often, often hard on a battery. Um, and, and the series type, uh, all of our non-MPP MPPT controllers, the PWM TriStars, SunSavers are of, of the series type that directly transfer uh, current from the array to the battery. There's different ways to accomplish this via different switching methods. Some are simple on, off to allow the current to flow to the battery. All of ours use a PWM pulse width modulation type that accurately and precisely uh, delivers just the right amount of current to the battery for, for optimal charging. All the way up to the probably the more, most complicated uh, type of charge controller, uh, the most complex and, and often more expensive, uh, MPPT. Um, I'll talk a little bit about how these different types interact with 
with battery systems and, and what considerations you need to make um, when, when making that decision. So again, I hope it's uh, fairly well known. The primary purpose of, of your charge controller is to uh, prevent the solar panel from overcharging the battery. Um, also prevent it from undercharging the battery. Uh, we want to harvest as much as we can from the panel while it's all the sun is shining and, and maintain those batteries at the highest state of charge possible. Um, keeping, them, keeping the batteries charged at a, at a high level uh, is good for batteries. Every battery manufacturer will tell you that it, uh, it will increase battery life the, the higher the state of tar charge you can keep over time. Load management is also a consideration that uh, we've, we've included into uh, many of our products, the ProStar, uh, SunSavers, um, the TriStar PWM type controller can also be used as a, as a load controller. Um, this is why we, we typically design an off-grid system to run loads. So with a charge controller as kind of a central point in the system, why not use it to help manage loads cut them off if battery voltage gets low to prevent over discharge and, and things of this nature. Um, you also want a charge controller to tell you what's happening with the system, either through a simple set of LEDs, uh, a lot of our products have a, a simple green, yellow, red type LED, um, ProStar and TriStar, our SunSaver Duo, uh, they, they are uh, available with additional meters that can give you quite a bit of high quality data about what's happening in the system. And again, um, the charge controller will facilitate the remote communications with uh, the, the rest of the power system. So here it is kind of as the central point of the system and this is really how we feel uh, off-grid system design should be viewed with the controller kind of as the central brain to the overall system. It's a, it's a tie-in point for your panels. Maybe you have an auxiliary generator definitely your batteries uh, for some of the uh, maybe a residential backup system you have your inverter charger that runs your AC loads you may have DC loads so you can see it the, the overall system can get pretty complicated pretty fast and without something in, in the middle to to manage the, the overall functioning of of the system um, you're often left with, with with lots of questions about what's happening um, so the controller with a meter, uh, with LED indications, um, load terminals, um, clearly marked uh, PV terminals, when it's installed, should be able to give you an easy access point to uh, both install and troubleshoot if need be later on. Going back to the primary purpose of the of the controller, I um, hope this is again a, a familiar. Um, image to most of you, but uh, battery charging. Uh, this is the, the primary function that, that we spent uh, quite a bit of time and effort perfecting over the years, uh, a PWM type four-stage battery charging algorithm, um, again, standard in, in all of our products. Typically through a, a charge cycle, you know, one day, your batteries might be depleted over, over the course of the evening. At the morning, uh, when the sun's, sun's coming up, the controller should be allowing in a full charge to the battery. Almost as much current as can be produced by the array, maybe limited um, in some cases, but, but generally a wide open circuit that allows for a full charge. Um, once the battery voltage reaches a certain set point, we move into the regulation and slowly over time start to taper the current down to a level that uh, equates with a high state of charge of the battery. And once it's fully charged, uh, reach, it's reached uh, its, its uh, voltage regulation set point, we drop it into kind of a float mode that just maintains that battery charge um, at, a, at a bit of a lower voltage level to, to be ready for uh, use later when, when the loads need to come on. Um, there's also an equalized stage for, for certain types of flooded batteries that need a bit of a boost periodically to uh, even cell voltages and prevent uh, corrosion on the uh, internal lead plates of the batteries. This is kind of a general overview. There, there's a lot more, more to this, um, but in general, most of our, uh, all of our PWM controllers use this, this algorithm to maintain batteries, which, let's face it, are a pretty expensive part of the system um, and properly maintained with a controller uh, like this. They should last quite a long time, uh, well over five years. Some 
some 10 and more. As I mentioned, shunt uh, controllers are used to be a bit more prevalent. Um, this is kind of a, a thing of the past in many ways, but we do see a few of these in, in oil and gas type applications where basically your controller uh, just shunts current uh, from the battery through the controller in order to reduce uh, charging current. It's kind, of a, it's kind of a real rough way to charge a battery. Um, we actually don't produce and have never produced a controller that uses this, uh, so I'll just move into the uh, series type. Um, the series type charge control puts the controller directly in line, as I mentioned before, between your array and your battery and or your load, and uses a voltage sense device in between to precisely measure the state of the battery and divert current through uh, to, to recharge it as the load draws it down. Um, the switching that you see on the top here, uh, labeled as HVD and LVD, is, is what varies in, in different controller designs. The manner of the switching, the type of switching, um, but this is what the primary function of the controller is doing regardless of, of, of what, what controller you're using or which brand controller you're using. Um, last notes on, on the PWM type regulation. The primary function of this type of controller is to measure accurately the battery voltage and inject current, allow current to flow into the battery to recharge it at that precise voltage. So the more accurately we can do this, the better uh, it is for the battery's longevity and, and service life. All batteries are different. There are different set points, um, four different battery types, gel, sealed, flooded, um, even some nickel cadmium. And, and we take this into account when, when designing our, our set points within our controllers. And in fact, many of them, the SunSaver and PPT, the TriStars, they all offer fully programmable and customizable set points to really fine tune your battery voltage set points. You can also simply uh, use the uh, built-in settings, which are, are usually pretty good and cover about 90% of battery types. Um, again, all our controllers use that, that PWM type algorithm. Going on to the maximum power point type, um, these controllers are often the most sophisticated. Uh, as you've probably seen in the market, they, they vary widely in terms of cost and, and feature sets. Um, we design our maximum power point tracker controllers to, to truly do just that. Harvest the maximum energy from your array when the sun is up. You never know when you're going to need the power, and we want to make sure we uh, take full advantage of it as it's available. If you compromise on the type of maximum power point tracker controller uh, you buy in terms of cost, you'll likely see a lower total energy harvest. It's very difficult to to track the maximum power point of a solar array consistently throughout the day, accounting for changes in, in temperature and irradiance levels, and do so without losing available power. So the sophistication and, and the value in the controller itself is in the way that it physically tracks an array to bring the most power in through the controller and convert it down to, to battery voltage. This VMP of, of an array, all arrays are, are rated uh, for a particular level, it varies. Um, a 200 watt panel that might operate at a, at a VMP under standard test conditions of say 37 volts might not quite operate at that level, uh, that power level uh, in hot conditions. That whole curve, that performance curve will actually shift down to the left and you'll see a bit of a, a degradation in performance. That's just natural and, and due to the, to the nature of the technology. Um, in cold weather, it can shift up and, in fact, give you, give you more power than, than maybe the, the nameplate rating on the controller, or rather on the panel. So the purpose of, of being able to understand and read that maximum power point as it changes throughout the day and do so accurately is critical to, to fully harvest the maximum amount of energy uh, available from that, from that panel. Um, so you can see there's quite a few, uh, quite a few considerations. Um, to just summarize real quickly between PWM and MPPT type controllers, when you're dealing with a PWM type system, um, the key to note is you really need to match the array voltage and the battery voltage nominally. 
So for, say, a 12-volt system, your off-grid panel should run about 17 volts, um, and you would size the system in amps. On the MPPT side, and the real value that this brings is you size it in watts, you can use a much wider range of available panels that produce uh, all kinds of crazy voltages um, and convert down to uh, a battery voltage of 12, 24, or 48 volts typically. And doing this allows you to take advantage of some of the lower cost grid tie type modules, 60 cell or 72 cell modules, um, and, and use that full amount of available power all day to provide maximum charging current to the battery. So while you do typically spend a bit more on the, the controller itself, in terms of the overall system cost, uh, especially with panels being uh, as inexpensive as they are these days, um, you really get a tremendous value for your money or for the, the homeowner's money uh, as you're installing these systems for someone else um, to, to provide as much energy as possible for the lowest cost per watt. So again, as, as you're making your decision as to which charge controller to use, it's, um, it's a fairly complicated uh, decision. There's, there's quite a few dimensions to evaluate in order to ensure you're, you're choosing the right one. Um, and to ignore uh, many of these factors is, um, is to most likely uh, compromise the, 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 the optimization of the system in some way. Obviously, first, you need to really look at what makes sense for, for your system. Do you need that extra bit of, of, uh, of power from your panels that the MPPT can provide? Or does a PWM type uh, switching uh, controller serve your needs? Um, they both have uh, their own type of, uh, of, of application scenario. Um, again, environmental conditions. If you are installing a system in northern Canada on a cabin that will easily see minus 20, minus 30 C on a regular basis, you want to make sure your controller can handle that. If, again, on the, on the flip side, typically at, at higher temperatures, it's, it's difficult for power electronics to, to function well. And so looking at that, uh, you know, that last spec on the last page of the data sheet to really understand how the controller performs at various temperature ratings is, is pretty central to, uh, to the decision. Um, with Morningstar products, I can say that that minus 40 to 60 C range is generally what you can expect. It might fluctuate a little on the, on the higher end. But, but generally, there is no need to derate your system uh, to expect lower performance at those, at those ends. The controller will function just as it's intended, just as it's rated throughout that whole temperature range um, to push as much current as is available from the array into the battery. Um, you might want to consider uh, how your set points will be, uh, will be adjusted or what's built into the controller. Um, gel, sealed, flooded batteries all have different general ranges of, of regulation set points. Um, you might need to consider a low voltage uh, set point that uh, you'll dictate when your load will disconnect to prevent over discharge of the battery. Um, it's important to know what the internal built-in settings are for a controller and if the case warrants, whether or not you're able to go in and, and actually change those. With our SunSaver products, it's simple. Um, you can either insert or remove just a small little select jumper to switch between a sealed or a flooded type battery. Um, with a TriStar, uh, ProStar, you get a few more choices. Um, in fact, with a TriStar, there's actually seven built-in pre-programmed uh, charge algorithms, set points. Um, and an eighth that's fully customizable. So if you have some kind of special battery type or if you're doing a NICAD system, um, all that's fully programmable. Um, once you have the, the set points down, uh, protections, as I mentioned, lightning is, really, is very important uh, to consider what type of environment your controller will go into, whether or not moisture is a factor, uh, whether you think it will be subject to any kind of uh, variations in voltage for, for one reason or another. Um, it's important to, to know that your, your off-grid controller will, will, will be operating when you go back to check on it. Um, and these types of considerations absolutely have an impact on whether or not the controller will, will meet its expected service life. Depending on the application, communication could be, uh, 
could be a consideration. Um, many of our controllers have self-diagnostic capabilities to, to do the work for you. You don't have to troubleshoot and uh, bring your voltmeter out to find out what might have happened in the system. Um, easy to reset, um, easy to find information on the LEDs and, and, and flip through the meter displays. If you are in need of uh, some of the more industrial type standards, uh, we offer on the TriStar and PPT the full suite, uh, the Ethernet, uh, Modbus 485, RS-232 serial, um, and uh, again the TCP IP. So depending on your, your, um, your need for communication, our goal is to provide you with the open tools to interface directly with the controller at any level, whether you're an industrial type uh, installer and you need to sync your, your TriStar device with other industrial equipment, you have Modbus. If you have no interest in getting into the, uh, the last variable of your system, um, you, you just can use the meter. The idea is, no matter what you need, you can find the information you need and, and communicate directly with, with any Morningstar product um, to, to, to fit inside your system. Temperature compensation is, is one thing that I haven't mentioned so far that's uh, incredibly important um, in system design and, and controller selection. Uh, battery voltage, uh, set points, and as you've seen earlier, uh, panel uh, uh, performance characteristics change with temperature. It's, it's probably the most significant variable uh, in designing an off-grid system. You want to make sure your, your charge controller is able to compensate for those changes in, in necessary voltage set points on batteries. Um, many of many controllers offer this, some do not. All of our controllers offer at least a level of uh, temperature compensation that's, that's built in, uh, standard uh, 30 volts, uh, 30 millivolts rather, uh, per degree C. Um, we offer temperature compensation uh, terminals to run smaller gauge wire directly to a battery um, to, to, to gauge its, its true temperature and manage voltage around that, uh, that proper set point. It's, it, it can't be underestimated uh, or overemphasized the importance of making sure that your controller knows the true temperature of the battery and adjusts its set points accordingly. A cold battery will need to be charged at a higher voltage uh, for the same amount of current than a warm battery. And without uh, making this compensation, it's almost guaranteed that your battery will uh, reduce its, its useful service life. Um, to run through the last few, because uh, I do want to have time to talk about our, our MPPT uh, TrackStar technology and a few application scenarios. I'll try and get through this uh, fairly quickly, but but these all are important uh, considerations. On the load side, LVD, uh, you will want to ask the question, if you're running a, load, a DC load directly from your battery system, based on the sizing, it may be a good idea to have the option to cut off that load if the battery reaches a certain voltage. Um, with our ProStar Sun Savers, it's built into to the uh, to the face of the product itself. With our TriStar, um, you can use it as, a, as an LVD type controller. You just need to um, place a separate controller in series with your load and your battery. Um, and be able to monitor all this with some kind of a status indication. Uh, both the array status, the battery status, and, and the load status. Um, if you're not, not able to tell what's happening in your system easily at a quick glance, not only is it aggravating, but uh, it really puts the system at risk. All of our controllers use a low self-consumption, um, especially uh, some, of the, as some of the controllers get bigger, more sophisticated, uh, meters get brighter and, and bigger screens. Um, self-consumption is, is an issue. Uh, so you want to consider what is the self-consumption of a controller and, <clears throat> and how do they compare. You don't want uh, useful energy poached from your, from your system just to run the controller. Uh, at most, our TriStar, uh, even with Ethernet enabled, will use about 2.7 watts. Um, not a bad trade-off for, for the, the value that it delivers. And consider, consider quality. It's a little bit more difficult to, to quantify, um, but you can look at things like, what is the operating life for the controller? What's the mean time between failure? 
was it manufactured in an ISO 9001 facility? What are its certifications? Does it have a warranty? Um, very important considerations. Um, and also just simply ease of use. Can you put it, put it in the, the system easily? Can you uh, clearly understand how to wire it? Is there supporting documentation and tech support behind the product? Um, and last but not least, the commercial side of the decision. You never want to go with uh, with, with, a, with a, a vendor that uh, can't deliver, um, that doesn't have stock, that it's hard to get a hold of. Morningstar obviously tries uh, very hard and, and, and succeeds in doing these things well. Um, Matrix always has stock of our product. If they don't, because you bought too much of it, it's in our warehouse waiting to be shipped in a day. Um, when you call, you get a live body on the phone and uh, direct access to our, to our best design engineers and tech support um, on an ongoing basis. So hopefully this gives you a, a good idea of, of all the considerations that you need to make uh, when choosing this central part of your system. There's a lot more detail we could go into, but um, I'll switch now to, uh, to TrackStar and talk about our MPPT a bit since this is um, so central to, to the solar industry today, especially in off-grid. Um, our, our TrackStar algorithm was patented, uh, I believe, as the slide earlier said, back uh, in 19, uh, rather 2007. Um, it is a very fast sweeping um, de voltage detection algorithm is, is the best way to describe it. Um, it allows our controller to, to constantly manage uh, the, the output of the controller according to an adjusted VMP on your solar array. And it does so very efficiently. Um, this is an exceedingly difficult task to do. Um, it involves, in our case, microprocessor control, uh, some very um, detailed and, and well thought out algorithms um, that our engineers have spent quite a long, long time perfecting. And you know, really the, the value at the end of the day for you is to ensure rather the, to have the confidence that you can know your controller is not wasting power that could otherwise be used for the battery. Um, it's, it can't be underestimated the importance of, of doing so, um, especially, especially in off-grid systems. In terms of uh, the efficiency, I'll show a few slides here in, in a minute. Um, they all look like numbers, and I've heard uh, I've heard it said before that uh, efficiency is, is meaningless. Um, everybody tests under different conditions, and it doesn't matter. I would absolutely contest those, uh, those assertions. Um, it does matter. It's very important. And with, with the TriStar MPPT and the SunSaver MPPT operating well above, well above 95, which is uh, it was just typical for, for some controllers, um, you can be assured that most of the power uh, the vast majority of the power available for the roughly five hours or so a day you have is is harnessed, and I'll get into exactly kind of how we do this uh, this this magic uh, in a bit more detail. Um, I won't talk too much uh, of the numbers here, but just to, a quick example um, to show what type of advantage you get with a 12 volt nominal off grid. Uh, type battery system, um, you can see the the maximum power point in general runs for for a nominally sized system about 17 at about the 17 volt uh, range. If you're using a PWM system, your battery voltage will actually drag this down, and you'll lose the power um, between the roughly 14 or 15 volts your battery operates at and the potential the panel has at 17. Um, with the maximum power point, we actually convert that power at 17 volts on the panel through a, a buck type converter down to a 14.4, 14.5 volt uh, battery regulation voltage. And what this does is it boosts the current available for charging, especially at times when, you know, maybe in the morning there isn't quite as much charging current available, um, or uh, later in the evening when, as the sun is going down. You can just be sure that the maximum power point is, is it's locked onto at all times of the day. Um, one thing to note with, with our efficiency curves, um, we show here on the left our TriStar uh, on a 48-volt system. 
On the right-hand side is just a generic, typical competitor's efficiency curve, which trails off at higher power levels. The way we, the way we achieve this is through um, kind of building three 20 amp controllers, in the case of our, our TriStar 60, into, into one unit. And these different three stages turn on at various points in order to um, give you um, the, the most efficiency in that given power range. And these three stages are almost like gearing in a car. Um, this is where you, where you see these kind of uh, funny looking power curves that, that, parallel, that, that, that kind of plateau and, and, and taper off <clears throat> at higher, higher power levels. Um, so just some of the numbers you see roughly uh, between 97.5 and 99% for, for different VMP ranges. Um, on the TriStar, you might see for the same set of operating conditions on a competitor that doesn't have this three-stage design, uh, some, some reduced performance, you know, back down around the 95% uh, efficiency level that, uh, you know, that, is, that is typical. And, and each percentage of, of this efficiency loss really translates into some significant power just kind of wasted. Um, and we've done some rough calculations here and said that if you're running generally around 1,200 watts on your panel, over the course of a day, even just 1% of efficiency difference can translate into about 100 watt hours that you're, that you're not being able to use in your battery. I mean, this could run a 50-watt you know, light bulb for a couple hours. So it's in some of these uh, more remote systems where every bit of autonomy, uh, day of autonomy is, is really important, this is where efficiency comes into play. Um, again, to emphasize, with the MPBT technology, you get more power at earlier times of the day and significantly better efficiency in those lower output levels and, uh, and again, at those extremes on the high end. Um, they keep batteries generally at a higher state of charge than a uh, than a PWM controller would even, um, and this translates to longer battery life. Every battery manufacturer will say that the higher state of charge you can keep the battery, the longer it will last. <clears throat> um, and to do so consistently with with an MPPT type controller is is probably the best thing you can do to make sure uh, you know your batteries attain their their longest level uh, of of system life. I think, uh, I think, Sean, I might be running up on time, um, but I do want, if I could, just walk through a few application scenarios to, to put some uh, context to all this. Yeah, I, I think, uh, Kyle, is, uh, you know, we're winding up to, to noon there. You understand that. So, uh, but, you know, you've got some time. If you're some specifics, then let's get to them. I, there is one question. I don't know. We'll, we'll do it at the end, I guess. Denis uh, Gignac has a question that uh, we'll get to as soon as you, uh, as soon as you think that's appropriate. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'll just run through uh, briefly a few um, few of our uh, more typical representations of where you see uh, Morningstar products. Um, here on the left, this is a telecom installation uh, down in Brazil, where they've actually um, used these these small uh, microwave backhaul type type systems to provide communication for about two thousand uh, remote homes and, and villages around the Amazon basin. Clearly, one of those environments that uh, is pretty tough on on power electronics. But again, that tropicalization, conformal coating, uh, passively cooled uh, heat dissipation design really comes into play. On the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, this small you can kind of see it in the middle here. I'll point to it. This uh, this is the panel, a weather station on the top of uh, a mountain in Switzerland. I, I believe I, I believe it's the Matterhorn, um, and this has been up there running for for uh, quite a few years without, uh, without any attendance. It's a bit of a difficult site to get to. These are the kinds of systems that, uh, that we try to perform well in. Um, again, in a marine environment or around lakes, you've got to deal with uh, usually higher humidity levels, moisture, fog um, on the upper right, uh, rather the upper left. Uh, this is an installation, I think, in Perth, Australia. Um, Really, really brutal, uh, high temperatures, easily up in the 30, 40 degree C range during the day. Um, sea spray, salt spray, everything you can throw at the controller, um, again, working, working very well. Uh, in the upper right, even some, some of the larger systems. You know, I would guess this is somewhere in the, 
uh, two to four kilowatt range of, uh, of, of power levels. Uh, you know, you might see one or two TriStars or TriStar MPPTs uh, handling that, that type of array. Right on the water, uh, brutal conditions, um, heat, salt spray, uh, very difficult to perform well in. Uh, remote villages in, in uh, Africa, here's a couple, uh, one, in, one in Kenya, uh, the other actually I believe is in Central Asia. Um, TriStar products, SunSaver products, powering remote villages, uh, pumping water, um, providing lighting that's otherwise impossible. So just some, just some general ideas about how the, the products can be used. Um, we'd like to see uh, as many of your application photos as, as you're willing to share. Um, Everything, every little bit uh, helps, and uh, seeing the, the products and work uh, at work, especially in some of the more extreme environments, desert, again tropical, uh, really, really is a testament to our to our reliability. So I guess, Sean, if you have uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to address them. Um, that really that concludes the bulk of, of the presentation. Thank thank you so much, Kyle. Uh, we do have a. a it's a fairly specific question uh, from Denis Gignac, and as soon as I can access it here, I'll share it with you. Okay. I may need, this is one of those things we talked about, Kyle, I may need some technical <laughs> assistance here, and I'm sure Claudio will be here <laughs> any second. Well, I can also uh, always answer any questions offline. Um, Feel free to contact me directly. Put me in touch with anyone uh, through uh, through either Patrick or Claudia or Sean. You're gonna do it. Oh, sorry. Okay, so I can't access Denise's question, but I, I believe it was uh, radio interference. If you could just speak to that, maybe uh, specifically. Okay. Um, yeah, we, this is a question we get quite a bit. Um, the the first thing I'd say is that uh, on our on our MPPT controllers, uh, radio interference is, is pretty rare. It's, it uses a different type topology in the system, a much higher frequency design. So at the radio frequency spectrum levels that are that are typical, um, we don't we don't see much inter interference there. Um, where we have heard uh, of some interference is coming from uh, the PWM type controllers that switch at around the 300 hertz range. Um, in some special cases, this can be right in that band where you might get some some clipping or, uh, or clicking rather in, in your uh, in your overall system. That is a, a fixed frequency, that, but in in many of our products, it can be uh, turned off essentially. So you could change the product from a PWM type controller to an on-off controller, which greatly lowers that frequency from about 300 down to about 10. Um, and most of the time, we we found that this is a. It, while it's not quite as good for battery charging, um, it solves the noise issue and still allows uh, for a slower PWM type battery charging to take place. Um, a lot of our products, the, the, the SunSaver MPPT, um, I know for sure, uh, has an FCC uh, Class B type uh, noise rating. Now that's something that we've put some of our products through that we know are going to be used in potentially some industrial environments with noise. So look for that FCC rating as well. And, and with that, you can be sure that it's one of the high frequency designs that is very unlikely to cause interference in the system. Great, Kyle. Um, Si vous avez d'autres questions, c'est le temps. If you have any more questions, please ask them now as the uh, webinar will soon be uh, closing. Kyle, it doesn't look like, but what, what we'll do is if we do field any uh, offline, we'll send them to you and we'll get the answers uh, promptly, I'm sure. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm happy to provide any additional support that anyone needs. Um, Matrix is, uh, again, I want to thank you guys for, for allowing us to speak today. Uh, hopefully we can do it again sometime soon. It is our pleasure, my friend. Uh, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup tout le monde et uh, bonne journée. Uh, ceci conclut notre webinaire sur les uh, onduleurs Morningstar. Merci. <laughs>